Hey everyone, welcome to Adventures in Everyday Cooking, where every day can be an adventure in your kitchen. My name is Heather, and today's adventure is a request. So, I'm gonna have to read the name, Rico46209. Rico, you asked me if the Romerchoff, so that's the clay oven from Germany, is just as good as the Dutch oven, or does a person actually need a Romertoff and what's the difference between the two? Well, Rico, I'm so glad that you asked. I'm sorry it took me a little while to get to this, but I have your answer for you now because this week I tried doing bread in both things and the results will surprise you. So if you're ready for this adventure and you want to make some artisan bread, we're not doing sourdough today, we're just making a Mixer bread, let's get started. What you're gonna need is five cups or 600 grams of flour, one tablespoon or 11 grams of sugar, two and one fourth teaspoons of instant yeast, two and a half teaspoons or 15 grams of salt, one and two thirds cups of water or 379 grams of water. Make sure that water is about 110 degrees. Let's get started. All right, so to mix together our bread, we're gonna put our flour into our mixer along with our sugar, our salt, and our yeast. We're gonna bring that up and just get it started mixing just a little bit so that we can kind of mix all the ingredients around so nothing's left in a clump. And then we're gonna take our 110 degree water and we're gonna slowly start to add it to the middle of the mixer, not the side. Why? Because when you add it to the side, it ends up clumping on the side. So I try to get it right into the middle there. And I just add it slowly just to kind of simulate me using my fingers because I'm a lazy baker. I love using my mixer to make bread. I do my sourdough in here. I know there are some purists Jack, I'm looking at you, who say use your hands, but why would I when I know my bread turns out fantastic in here? Just saying. This recipe will make two loaves of bread, by the way, so we're gonna do the exact same recipe in both of these containers. All right, I'm gonna click it up a notch. I haven't even added all the water yet, and I feel like this helps everything incorporate way better when you go slow and add it right to the center. See how it's all pulling away from the sides? It doesn't get all stuck up there. Okay, once you see it kind of get into the shaggy dough stage, which should happen right away, we're gonna set a timer for seven minutes and turn it on medium, okay? Seven minutes now. Okay, it's in seven minutes. Let's get this out and into a bowl. So what I have here, is just a regular bowl. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in it. I'm going to grease it well. I'm also going to grease the top because depending on how big your bowl is and how much your dough rises, it may rise to the size of your bowl and then press against the lid and you definitely don't want anything to stick. And then let's check out our dough. Feels so silky smooth. I'm gonna put this into a nice little ball on my counter here. Oh, this dough feels so good. All right, let's make sure it's not stuck anywhere. And then we're gonna get this covered and we're gonna let it rise for about two hours at room temperature. If your kitchen is awfully cold, like under about 70 degrees, you can turn the light on in your oven and get it proofing in your oven. That keeps it about 75, 80 degrees. Um, but here in Texas, it's pretty warm, so this should be fine on my counter. Now let's talk about the difference between the two things. This is the Dutch oven that we're going to be using for this recipe. This is the one from Pampered Chef. It is an enameled cast iron um, Dutch oven. The idea behind a Dutch oven is that it traps moisture on the inside and um, helps more evenly cook. You preheat this in the oven um, way before you're gonna put your bread in. So when you get the bread into this, it's already at temperature and you put it in and you shut the lid and immediately everything starts to cook. So some of you who have been around a while will remember when I received this Romertoff. I had actually just been about ready to do a video and the Amazon guy knocked on my door and this was a gift from my brother-in-law. 
and he is a bread enthusiast. He absolutely loves to adventure with bread and sourdough and stuff like that. And, and so he sent me this and I was over the moon. I have made all sorts of things in this and it is a fascinating tool. So when Rico asked me, what's the difference between the Dutch oven and the Romertoff, I was like, well, I don't really know the difference. So then I started baking my bread side by side in this and that. And the results are actually quite fascinating because here's some things that you need to know about the Romertoff. This needs to be soaked in water for at least 10 minutes before you use it. So no water, soaked in water, okay? Then this goes in a cold oven. So when I put my bread into the oven, I'm going to put my soaked Romertoff in there with the bread into the oven and then start the bake at that point. Very different than a Dutch oven. Now, I don't know if that's because it takes a while for cast iron to heat up and distribute that heat and a clay pot not to distribute. I mean, that's my assumption. I don't know for a fact, but this will go in cold and that will go in preheated. Now, the inside of the Romertoff is glazed. As you can see here, there's a glaze on the inside. So nothing really sticks in here and um, the, the soaking doesn't do any good for that part of the pot itself. However, when you're soaking it, you're actually putting the water all over all of the pores so all of the clay sucks in all of that moisture and then when you shut the lid, put the bread in, shut the lid and start to bake it, all of that moisture comes out and helps cook that bread and make that bread have that blistery crust like we know when we put water inside of our, or, or ice cubes inside of our Dutch oven. Part of me wants to go ahead and put an ice cube in here because it's kind of not fair because this will already have the moisture in there, whereas this one will not. So in about two hours, when that's already risen and ready to go to the next phase, we're gonna shape and then we're gonna proof one more time. When that's all ready, I will be back and uh, we'll get these things in the oven and I'm gonna show you the difference because uh, there is a difference, so be back. Okay, it's been two hours and check out the size of this dough, it's beautiful. So now what we're gonna do, we're just gonna dump it out on our mat. We're just going to cut it in half because this is two loaves. So what I'll do is I'll just cut it right down the middle. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to stretch this dough into the largest rectangle that we can. Other bread recipes say to punch down your dough, but in this process of stretching my dough, I'm actually deflating it anyway. So I feel like punching it down just actually makes it a little bit too dense. So I don't do that part. So I just stretch it as far as it will go. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to fold it over on itself and continue to fold over on itself until we get to the end here. See that? So now we have this like log type thing and it's just like sourdough bread. So I'm gonna flip it over this direction, stretch that just a bit, and I'm going to pull and tuck and tuck and look at how beautiful and tight that loaf is. Now here at the ends, we don't want them to look like little sausage rolls. I mean, you could if you wanted, but instead I'm gonna take the edges and I'm just gonna pinch them together like this so that I have a nice little edge. I'm gonna do the other side the same way. And then we have a nice little sausage roll and I'm gonna just push it down just a little bit. All right, there we go. Check out our cute little sausage roll bread. Yes, it's small, it's still going to rise just a little bit. So I'm gonna put it in a banneton. You don't have to put it in a banneton, um, but I put it in a banneton just because that way I can control how big it gets. Um, and if you see any of the seams starting to pull apart, then definitely put them in there. But look, there you go. That one's ready to go. So now let's do the same thing with this one. So we'll bring them over. We are going to stretch as far as humanly possible. Looks great. And then I'm just gonna do my little fold, fold, fold. And then one more roll. So pull, tuck and roll. 
tuck and roll, 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 roll. There's our sausage ends. We're just gonna push this over, hide that belly button. All right, there we go. There's a few fermentation bubbles on the top of that. That looks great. Okay, into my basket they're going to go make sure my edge is okay. So now I'm going to cover these with plastic wrap and I'm going to let them sit for 45 minutes. Um, at the end of 45 minutes is when we're going to start to cook them. So let them kind of sit 45 minutes, don't touch them. They will rise again a little bit, they will relax a little bit, and then we're gonna get them into our Romertoff and our Dutch oven. Now, it's important that you go ahead and start to soak your Romertoff. It needs 10 minutes, but I prefer 30 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get mine soaking now, and then um, we'll be back when these are ready to go in. All right, 45 minutes is up, and look how much those guys have rose. So my Romertoff is still soaking in my sink. What I did is just turned it upside down inside of itself and poured it full of water. It's been soaking for about the last half an hour, as well as my cast iron, um, my cast iron Dutch oven is in the oven right now, preheating. So one oven is preheating, one oven is cold. So keep that in mind. We're gonna do the Romertoff first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carefully, I probably should have oiled my saran wrap here, but that's okay. Carefully take off my plastic. Look at how beautifully risen that is. That's gonna make a great artisan bread loaf. Okay, and then I am going to take a piece of parchment paper and I'm going to carefully, there we go. Now I did well flour this just in case. So what I'm gonna do is just dust off some of that flour um, because I don't want all of that flour baking. I just didn't want it to stick to my banneton. All right, and once that's kind of dusted off that paper and I got flour literally everywhere, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some lateral cuts in this so that whenever it opens up in the oven, it'll like open up and split kind of like ears. So I'm gonna take my little lom here and I'm just going to make some cuts. And I'm gonna start here for this cut. And one more here and pretty low there. And then one more right here. Okay, there we go. All right, out comes our dripping wet Romertoff. And we are gonna lift this piece of parchment right inside the Romertoff. Okay, like so, try to make it into the middle. And this is going to go into the cold oven. I'm gonna set it for 450 and then set a timer for 40 minutes. Now the next one is gonna, we're gonna do the same thing, except we're gonna put it in the very hot Dutch oven. And we're also gonna put some ice cubes in it. All right, and here we go, we're gonna do the same thing. And we're gonna dust that off as well. All right, that looks good. We're gonna do the same slashes. Okay, now let's get that very hot Dutch oven and lid. Okay, now we are gonna carefully carefully set this down inside of our Dutch oven. That was not careful. <laughs> okay, if you do that, um, make sure that you get your cuts. Oh, that one's just gonna be a little, okay, it's fine. It's fine. That's what I get for not taking off my gloves. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is beside the parchment paper, we're gonna drop like three ice cubes. Okay. And now get the lid on and get it into the oven for 30 minutes. Okay, so at the end of 30 minutes for here, I'm gonna take this lid off. At the end of 40 minutes there, I'm gonna take that lid off and I'm gonna brown until perfect. Be back. Okay, welcome back and check out these breads. Both of these breads 
look absolutely fantastic. And if you made it in the Dutch oven or the Romertoff, which is a clay pot, I think you would be pleased with the results regardless of which one you used. But there are some specific differences that I want you to see. So for the Romertoff one, um, you can see when we get really up close that this has dozens of little blisters all over it. Now those blisters means that there has been more moisture introduced during the crest formation time of this loaf. Um, the blisters themselves make kind of this crispy, delicious um, texture, also helps to thicken that crest just a little bit. Whereas when you look at the other one, the other one doesn't have many blisters at all. Now I did put some of that, um, some ice inside of it, but there's nearly no blisters in this one. Now, depending on what you like, you either go for the blistery look or the non-blistery look. I prefer the blistery look. I like the crumb texture a little better. The other thing that you'll notice is that both of these had the same amount of slashes. This one opened up way further than this one did, and that's because this one had more moisture, so the dough was able to stretch a little uh, farther as it rose. So it was much slower, because remember, this was cold when it went in, this was hot. So this one immediately bounced open and it was hot inside there and everything started to solidify, which then made our little ears or our cuts a little bit um, tighter. This one, however, as you can see, opened up quite a bit. You'll also notice that this one looks significantly bigger than this one. Now that might be because this one was smaller than that one, or it could be just because that extra moisture help, helped open it up a little bit. Now, the other thing that I will show you that is a big difference is the bottom. Look at the bottom of the one from the Romer Toff. Nice and evenly browned, very beautiful. Everything about the bottom of this screams, I want to eat it. Now let's turn over to our Dutch oven. And this is a problem for most of us who cook in Dutch ovens who preheat them. Ooh, it's not burnt, but it's close. It is very, very dark. And while it's dark all the way around, that's a little bit too dark for the normal everyday home cook. So, could you have put it in not preheated? I mean, I suppose you could have, but everything that I have read and everything that I've seen says put it in preheated and you'll get the best results. However, now we have two bottoms of the crust baked identically. Oh, in fact, I wanted to tell you, I left this one in covered for 40 minutes. I left this one in covered for 40 minutes took it off for 15 and 15, and this is what we got. Two the same breads. Okay, let's cut into these. All right, so this is the first one, the Romer Toff. I'm just gonna take a couple cuts right off the end of it, and we're gonna check the crust and the moisture level. So this is just a regular white bread, and as you can see here, we have a good crust all the way around and it's a good even crust all the way around. And the moisture of the bread looks really good. That looks like an excellent piece of bread. And I'm sure it tastes good too. Oh yeah, that tastes like a good sandwich loaf. All right, now let's bring over this guy. Much more crispier. Ooh, you'll see why in just a second. So based on this crumb structure, we're looking at quite more of the brownness going all the way around. And that's probably due to the fact that we put it in at temperature right away. The inside still looks nice and moist. Other than this hardness at the bottom, it looks identical to its counterpart. So the inside of it looks really great. What I will notice, so as you can look at these, the, this one from the Dutch oven um, had more oven spring going upwards. And this one, because it was in a warm place heating, it had time to kind of relax a little bit. Um, however, um, I don't think either is wrong. 
So the more circular one is the one from the Dutch oven, whereas the kind of UFO shaped one is the one from the Romertoff. Both of them look like excellent bread, but as you can see, there is quite a bit more crust around the Dutch oven one. Taste wise, I'm sure they're identical. Hmm. No. Okay. So because there is so, so much more crust, the chew factor, like the chewiness of the, the ripping, how I can rip this and make it chewy. This is much more chewy than this was. This was more crispy, whereas this is much chewier. So if you like a chewy bread, go for the Dutch oven. But if you like just a, 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 a well-crusted bread, go for the Romertoff. That's interesting. I didn't, I didn't pick that up the last time I did this because I did this before I videoed because I wanted to make sure there was actually some kind of difference. I want to do one more trial. I'm going to cut these in half and I'm going to butter each side. Okay, so let's try the Romertoff one first. Okay, that crust is crunchy. The bread is soft and pillowy. It's a good piece of bread. The crust still has crunch, but it is way chewier. That's interesting. Okay. I love the way that chewy bread acts. It reminds me a bit like sourdough, yet I did no fuss and bust with sourdough. I just did kind of like a French style loaf with a little sugar. So the real question is now, which do I prefer? The Dutch oven, crunchy and toothy, very good like the flavor or the softer yet still crunchy. I can't decide. But regardless of which one that I would prefer, it really goes to my family to see what they prefer. So I think I'm going to take a slice of each, cut it in half and go serve it to my family and see what their thoughts are. Okay, they have spoken and they agree with me. The Romertoff one is a much smaller crust, much lighter crust. Um, my son said it feels a bit like the grocery store bread crust, which is way better than it being too tough and toothy. So he preferred this crust over this crust. Um, he said this one actually was really tough and while it was crispy and it still tasted fine, there was almost a hint of bitterness because maybe there was too much crust. I don't know. Um, but that was their decisions. They preferred the bread from the Romertoff. Now, was it enough drastically different that I would only ever bake in the Romertoff? Probably not. And the reason is because I bake bread a couple times a week and... Um, this will only take one loaf of bread. So unless I get another couple small Romertoffs um, that will do one bowl of bread instead of a loaf of bread that I can fit like three in my oven at a time, I, that's the only time that I would see that being beneficial to me, if that makes sense. However, if I was going for a really nice artisan loaf that I wanted, a, you know, like maybe even this full size in my Romertoff, like the onion bread I did the first time in the Romertoff, that would be fantastic. I would definitely use it for that. That being said, there are drastic differences. If you have the room and you're only doing one loaf at a time, definitely stick it in your clay pot, Romertoff, or whatever other brand you have. Um, it will change the way your bread acts, feels, tastes and even looks. So thank you Rico for asking me about this adventure because I truly didn't know the answer to it and now I'm glad to say that I know and that I'm a little more educated and maybe that helps someone else out there. All right you guys if you enjoyed that video give it a like share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. I do videos several times a week and I'm always looking for the next adventure. Thank you Rico once again for suggesting this adventure because that was a good one. All right, you guys, we'll see you on the next adventure. Bye.